those long arms with the steal. The Nuggets have been plagued by turnovers. And oh, mercy, Markkanen yes. went coast to coast. contra Batum, se va hasta adentro y con la izquierda el torito que bárbaro otro póster para los Cubs esta vez de Sexton a Batum Welcome to the Wine and Gold Show presented by Bedway Thank you for joining us on Valley Sports Ohio Now, here are your hosts John Michael and Rafa Hernandez Brito Welcome, welcome, welcome John and Rafa, packed, packed show Packed show. We got to get right to it. So don't talk too long. Our budget's going up. Not going only up. it's a packed show, but we, we've been on location for this show. <laughs> <Yes> yeah. We have. <laughs> that's, I guess that's our new thing, to go on location. <laughs> First half of the show, rookie, Southern Cal, Evan Mobley. It's rookie sensation, yeah. I would add. Yeah, he's been terrific, and we caught up with Evan. Uh, we'll see that in the first half of the show. Jess Davis will be joining us. She's the manager of youth sports operations for the Cavs. Second half, Cavs legend Brad Doherty. Always good to catch up with the seven-footer Brad. It is the best. I think he's one of the best storytellers Brad, that there is. And also impressive. because I, I, him and I, well, he, he obviously at a much higher level, but share the love for car racing, especially in NASCAR. <laughs> I thought you were going to say share the love. Obviously, he owns a car. I just, I just own a TV where I watch it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say share the love for basketball no. at a much higher level. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> yeah. That is a given. <laughs> well, yeah, that is a given. But Brad is, he's fun. He's joined us on Valley yeah. Sports Ohio. He will continue to join us uh, for selected broadcasts. Uh, we're filming this show today. Cavs played Boston for the second time just last night. Split the, a, a wild, furious comeback wow. on Saturday night. One of the best games of the season. At least one of the best fourth quarters of the season. Uh, for the Cavaliers, they come from a high win, 91-89. They lose last night by six in big part because they were shorthanded. No Jared Allen. He was ill. Lowry Markin and Kevin Love remain out of the lineup. They are uh, hopefully getting closer to returning, uh, but the Cavs were shorthanded. They lost Evan Bobley uh, in that ball game in the third quarter. Sprained elbow is the report that we got, so uh, that's all we know at this point, uh, and we'll find out more, I guess, as the week progresses. Obviously, Injuries are part of the game, John, but last night it was obvious that we lost that jumbo look that we've been we so lost successful every with. jumbo player. Right. Right, exactly. Everybody what I'm saying, was gone. He started with Mobley at the five. For the first time, I think he started a game at the five. Right, it was the first and one. And you yeah. could tell how much the Cavaliers miss not only Jared Allen, but also the rotation that J.B. Bickerstaff has been working on. Denzel Valentine got a few minutes on the floor. Very um, very good minutes, I thought, defensively and offensively, especially guarding Jason Tatum in the first game. But for sure, I think injuries caught up to us, and definitely for sure, the jumbo is our, is, is our identity, and it's how we're going to be successful here to keep these, these big guys yeah. healthy because that's what has gotten us to the winning record that we have, and that's how J.P. Bickerstaff kind of thinks it's going to steer this going in the future because it's definitely working. That's what's remarkable to me about the start. They won nine of their first 14. We've talked about the schedule over and over brutal. and over. It was brutal. And all the injuries. I mean, Love and Markman mm -hmm. out for an extended period of time. Now Colin Sexton. Is out, you know, so the Cavs have used other bodies. Next man up, we hear that in sports all the time. It's been real. And, and this season, something about this season feels different. There's an authentic belief. Some of these come from behind victories. That game against the Celtics on Saturday was unreal. Yeah. I mean, the Cavs were sunk. I mean, they were down and out. But down by 19 with three minutes left in the third quarter. And there's just, it seems to be an authentic belief. I know it's early, right? The, the NBA season's a long, grueling season. But, man, this is an encouraging, encouraging start without a lot of the key pieces yeah. available in this early portion of the season. And I'm hoping this is something that is going to benefit the Cavs down the road, John, with the experience that these role players are getting in key minutes in games. Hopefully when everybody's healthy and, again, you need these type of players, they're going to be ready to jump in the, on the court and, and provide those minutes, those important minutes for, for J.B. Bickerstaff. But for sure – the schedule doesn't get any easier. We no. can talk about it later, but <laughs> we have no. talked about how nobody's going to feel bad for you. It is one game at a time, and I believe that anybody that is a fan of the Cavaliers should be extremely happy with what we have shown on the court. Yeah, that, that you talk about that schedule. 19 to the first 25 games for the Cavs are against playoff teams from last season. That does not include three more against Charlotte and Golden State, two mm -hmm. teams that were in the play-in tournament last season, did not qualify for the playoffs. So 22 <laughs> 
if we're counting play in tournament teams uh, and the hits just keep on coming for the Cavaliers. You know, you look at contributions. Jetty Osmond has stepped up his Engage game when Jetty, the Cavs please. needed it most. Yeah, and, and how about, I mean, Ricky Rubio, we can't talk about this guy enough. Ricky Rubio has been the, the iron horse, I call him now, my broadcast, because that, that win against the Celtics, he came in at 9.30 to go in the third quarter and didn't sit down other than for timeouts until the Never end left. of the game. And then in the second game against the Celtics, he also w went off in the second half, and, 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 and it just came, they, we just came up short. Mm -hmm. There was no answer to a, a much healthier Celtics team than from the first game. And again, we competed, we fought. We were tough, and that's all JB is asking for the guy. One of the biggest causes for celebration has been Evan Mobley and his emergence at this, <laughs> again, young, young stage of his career. When we come back, we'll catch up with Evan. This is the Wine and Gold Show. More after this. show with our featured guest of the episode it is the number three overall pick in the most recent draft Evan Mobley great to see you yeah you too are you enjoying Cleveland thus far yeah I enjoy it a lot Cleveland certainly uh, enjoying you favorite part here uh, in the early going of Cleveland um, I love the fans uh, they're great uh, they just have so much energy for us so uh, I would definitely say that well they have quickly warmed up to you you know we were talking about one of the Cavs first road trips was to your home, basically, yeah. uh, in Southern Cal, uh, <laughs> less, a couple of miles away from where you played your college basketball at Staples Center. Uh, first off, how many people did you have there at the ball game? And did how you much actually, did it cost you? Did you make money or did you lose money? <laughs> Was your game salary enough to cover all the tickets that you had to pay for at Staples Center? Um, yeah, we had a lot of family there. Um, like Probably like 15 the first game and like 20-some the next wow. game. And that was just like from family I know. There's probably a lot more people that like <laughs> I know of, but I didn't know that they were really there. There um, were a ton of USC jerseys. It was, yeah. it was nice. Yeah. It was nice. Yeah. 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 Was there more pressure on the court for those games or off the court and having to deal with everybody being there? Um, I feel like my mom and my family did a good job of like handling that Very themselves nice. and stuff. So um, it was just me going out there and playing the game. You know, I know you're number three pick. The future of the Cavs playing wonderful basketball, but I knew you were a powerful guy when we had to practice. When we did practice, not have to, but when we practiced at USC and not UCLA. <laughs> yeah. So we went from practicing on Kevin Love's spot for years to watching for him years. getting dunked on while you guys were practicing. <laughs> yeah. How was that going home? You, you, the guys were calling it the house that E built, but was it good to be back home? Uh, yeah, it was great. Um, I love that campus. Um, <laughs> It was fun practicing where I used to practice at uh, with all the, uh, my new teammates, so uh, it was fun and, getting and there. Right, for a little bit of background, ever since Kevin Love has been on the roster, We've, every time the Cavs go out on the West Coast, they practice at UCLA, and in his first season, in our first extended road trip, USC. And by the is, way, is, at, the, at his <laughs> training area, yes. where he's all these pictures of him, you know, with like, like young Kevin, Kevin Love Kevin, and everything. Right. Young Kevin Love, and then we switch to USC, and there's Kevin getting dunked on yeah. by, uh, I forget who is it that, uh, I forget who is it that was dunk on, dunking on him on the picture, but I was like, man, Evan Mobley got some power here. Like, yeah. <laughs> My guess is it's a little more special considering your father and your brother who are part of big parts of the program as well. Yeah, uh, that definitely was another big factor coming back home, uh, seeing them. I, I haven't seen him in a while, so uh, it was good to see them. I, I enjoyed seeing his father just beaming. I don't think your father stopped smiling from the <laughs> second we got <laughs> to L.A. Yeah. to the second we left back-to-back -back games, of course, against the Clippers and the Lakers. Uh, wh what does it mean to you, Evan? I mean, you know you come from a basketball family. Your mom won right, a yeah. state championship in high school. What, does it mean more to you coming from a basketball family that you've gotten to this stage and that you continue to perform so well in this year rookie season? Uh, yeah, it means a lot. Like... Uh, I've been working for this like my whole life and um, I'm finally here doing it in the league so um, I just got to keep going and maintaining and um, it's been fun so far so. You know I read that at the beginning you weren't too, too much fun of basketball. What, what did it for you about the, about the game other than you grew yeah. a lot, <laughs> he got, a lot well, taller? He got pretty yeah. good. I don't know. <laughs> no, I know, but like, no, kind of <laughs> I guess you were kind of forced into it at the beginning with your brother and your father. What was it that turned Evan into, into a, a love for basketball? 
Um, I just started seeing how good I could really be, um, and I just started working more and more and got better and better. And then um, during like in middle school, high school, um, I got got really good and started seeing my potential. And um, I just started working and got better, and that's when I like really started. And the other question I wanted to ask you is, what's tougher? being the son of a coach or the son of an elementary school teacher? Because I think the on both sides, you get it yeah, kind of yeah. hard, no? Um, well, who was tougher when you were growing up? Um, they both were pretty tough on me, <laughs> yeah. but um, I feel like they kept a good balance. Um, like my mom being a teacher, she helped me with school. And then my dad being a coach, helped me with basketball. So it was like a good balance of both. You know, he asked about growing up, realizing your potential. You had a big growth spurt, right? And yeah. you were actually playing guard for an extended period of time. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. And I'm assuming that's you attribute a lot of your ball handling and passing skills to the fact that you had done that. How much did you grow, and, and when did it happen? Um, probably freshman sophomore year grew about. I was like six one, six two, grew to like six five, six six, <laughs> and then junior year like six eight, six nine, and then senior year probably yeah, like wow. around six eleven, seven, and. Uh, I just kept my guard skills from being small and then grew up into who I am now. Yeah, that was my question. I'm assuming that during your prep entire career, it just continued. What, you know, he said you, you know, you found your interest for basketball at some point along the way. What are the other interests for those who want to get to know you uh, here in Northeast Ohio? Um, I just like learning a lot. Um, I like watching a lot of podcasts, uh, documentaries, also like Marvel movies. So, um, just stuff like that. What are your favorite <coughs> podcasts or uh, po documentaries? Uh, I like watching I Am Athlete. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. I like watching. Cool. I, I wanted to ask you about, you know, not basketball-wise, because I, I'm sure you've been buried with questions about the difference <laughs> and coming to the NBA basketball. and the game. <laughs> we're not, we don't really know much about basketball anyway. <laughs> but in terms of the lifestyle on the road and, mm -hmm. and you know, hanging with the team, what, what has been the best part or the most difficult part as well? To get a to get used to in, in the NBA, um, probably all the traveling. Like every time you, you're somewhere, you got to go somewhere else. Like <laughs> within like the next day or so. So that's probably like the hardest part to adjust to. But um, I like it. It's fun. Like seeing all new places I haven't been. Um, it's just a fun experience uh, living like this. And since I said that Evan is a powerful rookie. Yeah. And you know you moved us to, to USC. Have you uh, have you been able to manage around the rookie duties? You know, I know we have a good crowd, a good group here, but how is that going? Uh, it's been pretty light so far. Um, I just gotta bring donuts sometimes <laughs> for like when we uh, the donuts, yeah. go. But uh, it's been pretty light. Uh, my guys, my group of guys is cool. So yeah. You talked about experiencing new places. Staples Center checked off the list. Madison Square Garden checked off the list, you were terrific in both venues. Have you had a welcome to the NBA moment that maybe coming into your first game where you squared up against somebody or, or you were walking onto the floor? Was there a moment where you said, oh my goodness, here I am, I finally made it? Um, probably maybe the Lakers um, playing against all those top players like LeBron, AD, and all them. Um, that, was a, that was definitely like a welcome to the NBA moment, like playing against players you've been watching hmm. for a long time. So. Uh, that was a great moment for me. Where does it hit you? Does it hit you right before tip-off? Does it hit you when you have to defend one of them for the first time? Or what, does it, is there a certain point uh, where it gets to you? I feel like it's waves. Like first, when you're like warming up, you see them out there, but it's just warm-ups. And then when you get out there on the floor, you start seeing them. And then like when you guard them, you're like, oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, I've seen got, this yeah. once or twice so, before, right? Um, so it's like waves, I feel like. And he's also a mom and a man, I'm one of them. Yeah, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's, right? that too. <laughs> and, and, and speaking of arenas, and we, I know we haven't got to Philly yet, but which one, have, do you listen to the fans? Are, they, are there a lot of hecklers? And what, what arena has gotten you most attention for you from the stands? Um, probably the Cavs. Yeah? Honestly, yeah. <laughs> How good? Uh, I hear my name a lot uh, in that arena. Um, but uh, I, I was just too focused on the game for uh, Madison Square Garden and, and Staples. Yeah. So Another player who's been focused since game one of the season has been Jared Allen. You play yeah. alongside him. There were questions for some in the national media. Can Mobley and Allen play alongside well, just, each other? And boy, you guys have answered that with a resounding yes. So what, what has it been like to play alongside Jared Allen? And, you know, 
he helps your game a lot, you help his game a lot. How's that been over the first handful of games? Uh, it's been great. Um, he's a great shot blocker defender. Um, I'm a great shot blocker mm -hmm. defender, so I feel like uh, we got both of our strengths like play hand in hand and uh, we just be protecting our ourselves. So. I'm going to look it up. I think you guys are going to break the record by the time the season is over from seven footers, alley oops. Yeah. <laughs> big, 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 <laughs> when they do seven footers on each end, it's going to alley oops. Yeah. It's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. And we're happy to, we're happy to have you here. Thank you for coming and joining us. And, and, uh, but do you miss the battles with your brother? Uh, are, yeah. Have you, have you, when was the last time you played basketball against your brother? Shoot, since USC. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. While. But, um, yeah, I miss that, but uh, I seen him when we went back to L.A., so it was good to see him then, and uh, hopefully I'll see him again soon. He's your older NBA court. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's your older brother. When was the first time you beat him at one-on-one? -on -one? I don't know. The first time. <laughs> yeah. Well, there were so many times I can't remember. Is that one of those yeah. We got to ask Isaiah now, man. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, gotta... we played a lot of games. Yeah. 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 The parting gift, though, he bought him a car, right? Yeah. I mean, that was nice. Yeah. <laughs> that was very nice. Yeah. What kind of car was it? Uh, Dodge Charger. Ah, yeah. very nice. Yeah. So I'm that sure was awesome. He, and I know he loved it because yeah. I saw the video you posted. He was, he was yeah. surprised yeah. at first. And then he I mean, hey, I, I wonder, I wish my brother gave me a, <laughs> a Charger. Great stuff. Uh, before we let you go, your message for the folks here uh, in Cleveland who have really, really enjoyed your game and your presence and your attitude and everything else since the start of the season? Um, I just want to say thank you uh, for welcoming me so warm. Um, but it's a long season, and we're just going to keep working. Hey, keep it up. Great stuff. Yep. Good keep catching up with you. Right. Evan Mobley, everybody, will be back right after this. We welcome you back to the Wine and Gold Show. The manager of youth sports operations for the Cavaliers has graced us with her presence. It is Jess Davis. Jess, wonderful to see you. Very nice to see you. May guys. I say we're really going big time here. Oh, the first I, time so we have a guest <laughs> in the studio. I know. I know. I'm honored. I'm honored yeah. to join you as your first yes, guest. Yes, we selected well. <laughs> Jess, you are a big part of the Cavs Academy camps, mm -hmm. and that's such a backbone of what this Cavalier organization does. Walk us through, you know, for those who want to have their youngsters in these camps, how do they do it? Uh, just take us through how special this is and what this organization does for the youth in this community. Yeah, we, we do a lot for the youth, and, mm. and our camps are a phenomenal opportunity for kids to get better um, at the game of basketball at a young age. And um, we start as early as three, and we go up to the age of about 16. Nice. Um, and if they want to learn more, they can check us out on CavsYouth.com. All of our camps, clinics, everything you need to know, you can find it at CavsYouth.com. I know you play basketball. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that. But do you ever see yourself as Coach Jess? I mean, I mean, when, when was that transition? Because you are definitely Coach Jess when it comes to the Cavs Academy. Yeah, Coach Jess, uh, it was established in 2011. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so uh, I did not play college basketball. I did play high school basketball. Uh -huh. But uh, once I graduated college, somebody saw something in me that I did not know was in myself, which was to become a coach. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's when my journey started. And, and, and Coach Jess it so where are the locations and what can you know parents and a child expect when they go to these academy camps? Yeah, so coming up, we have a Black Friday clinic at Ooh. Madonna High School. Uh, is on November 26th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, really, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, and then we have a two-day holiday clinic on December 29th. That's a Wednesday. And then December 30th, Thursday, at Lutheran West High School from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And they can find all the information and register on CavsYouth.com. And, and they can expect to have fun and get better. And um, also, CavsYouth.com slash clinics. Slash clinics, And you can yep. expect for 65 bucks, right? Yep. You can get instruction from experts. Well, of course. <laughs> you can get two tickets to a home game. This is what I was going to yeah. ask. What are all the Cavs games? Yeah, right. And I want to get into this because everybody that participates gets a cool, dry fit, all star exclusive uh, Nike yeah, 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 shooting yeah, shirt. Yeah, Extra large for me, please. It's part of being a guest. But, but I show. think that is the coolest yeah. thing. Not, and not only that, sometimes this time is in Medina, but sometimes they also play at the Fieldhouse or at Cleveland Clinic where yeah. the Cavaliers actually yeah. practice and yeah. play. Yeah, and, and I'm so sorry I came to the show as a first 
first guest, and I did not bring a shirt. Oh, yes. Yeah, Please forgive me. Please <laughs> forgive me for not bringing the dry fit shooting shirt. Just Please. M- most shows give their guests yeah. a little token of their appreciation on this show. I'm never coming back. Yeah, I'm on sorry. This show, I'm the never host actually back. asks for stuff. I'm so I'm sorry. Like, no, we're sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, well, I just. <laughs> it's the library that I have yeah. to do, and every time I see Cap's Academy, I know it's he, you, so I do it with a little more something. flair. You yeah, know? You, know, you know, we play the Warriors this Thursday, uh-huh. and I'll have a special gift for both of you. Oh, Ooh. see? See how nice she yes. is? I, this I'll is make why, a You're rewarding oh this behavior, though. Yeah. This is why I'm this so continues. Okay. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, before we let you go, Cavs Kids Night. It's also eSports Night yeah. by eSports Gaming League. Sunday, December 5th against the Utah Jazz afternoon game, mm-hmm. 3.30 tip. Uh, should be a special night. And it's always good to, you know, heartwarming for us to be a part of a night like that, mm-hmm. uh, honoring the kids and honoring everything that you guys do, mm-hmm. which is so fantastic, like right. I said, for this uh, for this community. Yeah, I think the night will be fun, full of fun. I mean, with the way the world is going now, you have kids that are – on the court, active in the basketball, and then you have kids that are off the court, active in video gaming. Um, and so now to tie the night into one big, one big event, uh, it'll, it'll be special. Jess, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for having me. Sorry now that you have to give him something. <laughs> <laughs> I have both. Of you. Well, yes. <laughs> there More you one. go. <laughs> More wine and gold show right after this. We are back on the Wine and Gold Show. Great catching up with Jess Davis. That group does such a tremendous job in the community. Community service, of course, a backbone of this Cavs organization. And speaking of which, on November 10th, for Salute to Service, the Cavs partnered with TAPS, the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors that offers compassionate care to all those grieving the loss of a loved one who died serving our nation. Now, CEO of Rock Entertainment Group, Len Kamarowski, and Nick Barlich, President of Business Operations of Rock Entertainment Group, Ken Taylor, CEO from Ohio Cat and Adjutant General of the Ohio National Guard, Major General John C. Harris Jr., presented the families of Sergeant Dennis Kanzler, Lance Corporal Ryan Robert Smith, and Sergeant David Alexander Stevens with a number six Cavs jersey. Really nice moment. Uh, the number six signifies the signifies the six o'clock position, and in the military is commonly used to say, I have your back. Cavs in the community is presented by Discount Drug Mart. When we come back, Cavaliers legend Brad Doherty. That's on tap here on the Wine and Gold Show. Back to the Wine and Gold Show, and look who it is, a special guest. It is Brad Doherty. Good to see you, my friend. Great to be working with you again. Yeah, um, thanks for having me on to watch the show. It's a great show, and I'm tickled to be a part of it, so it's good to be here. Yeah, we are tickled to talk to you about something you know a little bit about, big men. Sure. All right, let's start in an obvious spot, Evan Mobley. Only a handful of games into this young man's career, and he seems to show us something different each and every night. Yeah, you know, John, the big thing with with him is just his, and, and it's really cliche, but his basketball IQ on both ends of the floor. I mean, you watch him defensively, he's ahead of his peer group, and uh, his, his footwork is excellent. Um, his timing is impeccable. He blocks a lot of weak side mm-hmm. shots, which is what you want to see from a great defender. And then on the offensive end, it's just a matter of a little bit of maturation, confidence. Mm-hmm. It's all there. But I'll tell you the thing I've noticed about him that, that puts him in a different level or a different league is on pick and roll plays with Darius Garland. He can throw in the basketball. And to be a great pick and roll player as a big guy, you got to have great hands. Mm-hmm. Everybody talks about your feet. you got to have great hands. Yeah. He's got great hands. Brad, as somebody who could do a little bit of everything, what has been the most impressive about this start? I mean, big men go to different progression, you know, sure. some footwork or, you know, th- different things, defense, offense, whatever it may be. Yeah. What has been most impressive about this young man's start yeah, to it's, you? Yeah, it's the analogy of, you know, uh, you think of, of your daughter and, and, and your son, and they're about the same age, but your daughter seems so much older. Yeah. Well, that's the way it is with big guys. We're, it's so much slower for us because we play in such limited space. Yeah. And so it takes a little bit more time. What I'm seeing with him, though, is the evolution of the game. Every three games, he gets it's, – it's, it's really remarkable how much better he gets. Yeah. And uh, to me, that tells me he's got, all the, he's got all the intangibles. It's the absolute ability for him to gain more trust in his teammates – more trust in his coaches, 
And that, that just comes through experience. And as that goes along, we've got something really, really special with this young man. He's going to be a superstar. You mentioned, you know, he's a young guy, under 20 years old. Mm -hmm. But he has to not only come in and learn how to play the game as a professional, but also next to another seven-footer. Sure. Or at least closer to it. How, how much of a big, of an impact is that? I mean, to appreciate the fact that, aside from all the things he has to learn from mm -hmm. the game being faster, different terminology, you know, bigger guys and everything. But now he has to learn to do something that he hasn't done before in his life, yeah. I think. Just play with another big guy that takes up space as well. Absolutely. It's probably the most difficult thing you can do. And the reality of it is you see a lot of guys every year who are drafted very, very high, who are big guys in today's game, and they come in and they totally disappear. And they just are gone. You never see them again. It's because of that fact. It's so hard to play your position in today's game if you're drafted high, regardless of who you're playing with. But you're taking a guy who's used to being around the rim, used to being in the paint. He's, you know, he's everywhere. He can face forward. He's done a little bit of that at USC, just a little bit. But now you've got someone else that really occupies that space. That's where the brilliance of, of Evan Mobley shines is because he's able to adapt. He's able to give Jared Allen enough space to be himself with Jared Allen's dynamic defensive rim protector. Uh, Evan's able to move out, turn around, and face the basket. And that creates, and I think that's a huge advantage, especially – when marketing is in the basketball game, we got three seven-footers, and you got Mobley, a guy that can face the basket, can pass the basketball. You have to guard him. Sometimes you have to send two people at him. It's a great thing to be coaching those young guys. A lot of homework to do for them. It's a ton of homework for the other team. Yeah. Jared Allen has really taken off this season. Brad, you've seen it throughout your career. Guys sign the big contract. Yeah. And then exhale, right? Yeah, and then yeah. say, ah, I made it. You know, yeah. take it easy. Jared Allen, he's been the exact opposite, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he, he brings his lunch pail every night. And – I watch him play, and, and I still think there's more there. Yeah. I think there's more there that he doesn't even realize he has. Uh, but I love his attitude. His, his defensive presence is infectious. I mean, guys know if you're out there on the perimeter and you're a guard, you know if you get beat and that guy turns a corner that they're going to be looking because he's there. Yeah. So that's a great comfort for this basketball team. But love the young man. I love his work ethic. I think he makes everyone better when he's on the basketball court, and that's a sign of a really great player when everyone else gets better when you're on the court. Would you agree that he's looking for his spots more this season than even the Jared Allen we saw at the end of last year? 100%. He's never had to in his career. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, he's always just been that guy who was going to stop the – he's going to put his finger in there for all the water <laughs> running out yeah. and stop everything. Well, now in this situation, uh, Coach Bickerstaff and all these guys are encouraging him to look for opportunity. And the offense, the way we run our offense – now, there's so many chances for that big guy, especially 15 feet around the basket because he's setting screens, he's passing the ball, he's pick and roll. He can step in and take that little shot every mm -hmm. once in a while, or he collapses with a guard as he, as he drives, and now you got those monster dunks. Mm -hmm. So I think there's more there, though. I think he can make more 15-foot shots, and I'm encouraging him to do that when I talk to him yeah. because I think if he does that more three or four times a game, now, defensively, you really got a problem. you got to make a really serious decision if you're the big guy, how you're going to guard Jared Allen. We'll be right back with more of the Wine and Gold Show presented by Betway. Always good catching up with Brad Doherty. Hey, you want to talk big men? Why not talk to one of the best who ever do it? And he is big. <laughs> and he used to play big. Yeah. And he loved <laughs> being in the middle of the paint. Yeah, I think I, I think there's something about this team that he embraces. You know, the the the, the jumbo lineup has been the talk of everybody, <laughs> really, around the league uh, since the beginning of the season. And a lot of big bodies out there. Cavs fortunate to get be getting some back yeah. uh, in Kevin Love and Lowry Market, and hopefully soon. Uh, but you can tell Brad Brad likes that jumbo look. He approves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no question about it. He, he's an interesting guy. Brad is a NASCAR owner. Also, uh, you know, had a storied history in terms of his collegiate play uh, at North Carolina. And we talked to him about a little bit of that stuff as well. I love when I talk to Brad because we do talk Cavs. But also, you know, whenever you meet a guy who played for University of North Carolina, you know he has stories about Dean Smith. who, I mean, a great program is equivalent to a great coach. And Dean Smith is at the top. I don't care what the winning total is. Dean Smith is Dean Smith. But also, I love talking NASCAR with him because <laughs> NASCAR is one of my favorite sports and one of the first things that I ever called. And, and I knew more of Brad as a NASCAR owner and commentator than I did as a basketball player, even at the beginning. Obviously, you know, my covering other sports. But 
I know his eyes lit up, just like you said about talking about the big guys. When you talk to him about NASCAR or Dean Smith and UNC, his eyes lit up and his stories are always amazing. It was a fun chat. Take a look. We talked about Cavs basketball, Brad Doherty, but let's talk a little bit about pre-Cavs for sure. Brad Doherty. And obviously you went to UNC, mm -hmm. played for one of the greatest coaches in college basketball history, yeah. the great Dean Smith. Yeah. And I hear that there were a few schools that were interested in you when you were <laughs> <laughs> 700 yeah. school, I think it yeah. was, that recruited you. Yeah. What? And the story about why UNC, I think, is the best part about, and I think it describes the family atmosphere that, that Dean Smith had at, at, at UNC. No doubt about it. I, had a, I was really highly recruited, as a lot of guys who end up playing at this level are. And had a great chance to look at a lot of different schools. And, uh, you know, I, I went to all, on all these visits to various schools and, was promised all these things. And, oh, it was great. Some we can talk about some we can't. Yeah, can't talk about most of them. And, and, and I get to Chapel Hill and I'm with my mom and uh, Coach Smith sits down and we talk about it. And he, he's not asking me anything about basketball. All he's asking me about are academics and what I want to accomplish academically and where do I see myself after I get through playing basketball and those types of things. And he told me, you know, he says, you come to North Carolina. He said, uh, I won't promise you you'll start, but I promise you you'll get a great education. And that, my mom was sold out. Oh, like, oh man, he I want a mom? car. Yeah, what about a car or a house right. or a boat Not or something? Game, yeah, man. Yeah. So after that, and I didn't hear that anywhere else, really, I went. And I, and I knew deep down inside that was the right person for me to be around. And uh, I'm so blessed and so lucky and fortunate to have been around Coach Smith for so many years. And the amazing thing is that anybody that went to UNC says the exact same thing, even after Dean Smith moved yes. on. Yes, yes. And... Is it true that he also was involved in helping you with the finance? Helping sure. Not just you, but almost everybody that made it professionally with the finances yeah. and, and kept an eye on you buying, it's unbelievable. buying watches and it's stuff? It's unbelievable. So if you played for Coach Smith, and I don't care if you were the last guy on his 1972 basketball team or you're Michael Jordan, he stayed in contact with you. And it was constant contact. And when I, when I got into the NBA, when I was drafted, came into the NBA in 86, he would call me like twice a month. And, and I don't even know if this is legal now, but before <laughs> I signed with my agent, he told me, he says, you can only sign with an agent that will allow you to allow me to help monitor your finances. And I'm like, sure, whatever, we'll do that. And so I talked to Michael Jordan, I talked to James Worthy, all these guys. He did it for all of us. And so when I would buy things, I came to Cleveland here and I, you know, so excited, had a little bit of money and <laughs> I'm buying stuff and I bought a Rolex watch. And uh, I get a phone call from Coach Smith like a week later. He's like, I see you bought a watch. I'm like, yeah? He's like, you're an old country guy from Black Mountain, North Carolina. He said, the last watch I saw you wearing was a Timex. He said, you bought a Rolex. I said, yeah. He says, does it tell time any differently? Yeah. I said, no. He says, you need to return that watch. You yeah. don't need that. And so we were playing the Lakers two weeks later. Yeah, I'll never forget this. And I'm standing at half court and James Worthy, I'm talking to him. I'm like, how's it going? He's like, I'm doing good, man. He's like, Coach Smith called you? I said, yeah, he called me yesterday. He, said, he called me this morning, man. He said, I bought a car last week, and he's telling me to take it back. <laughs> so we, we had that, and he was like a dad to all of us and uh, just loved us and cared about us, and he was fiercely loyal to anyone that was under his tutelage. And it, it just I saw Ed Davis today, who's mm -hmm. on the team, and, and we have that bond. Ed's a lot younger than I am when he played there, but we all, you know, we hug and embrace, and, and we you recognize that family. And um, when Coach Smith passed away. I was fortunate. I was one of the guys he asked, his family asked to speak at his wake, and I, I got to talk, and it was great. I had a great time with, with his family and remembering coach. It was on a Thursday. I got home, and on Monday, I got a letter, and it was from, it had Dean Smith, and I was like, okay, so I'm looking at this, and I opened it. He sent every one of his lettermen a $200 check, and it said, Bradley, he called me Bradley, he said, there's $200, take your family out, have a nice dinner on coach. Now, this was posthumously oh, that's, that's for awesome. all of us. Yeah, that's wow. fantastic. For all, everyone. Yeah. So that's just the kind of person he was. And you can ask any of these guys in this organization. I was talking to Sidney Lowe today, yeah. and coach recommended him for the Olympic team and made sure Sidney got on the Olympic team. Antonio Lang, mm -hmm. coach told him, you know, I've got all these guys, go play for Coach K, who was young at the time. Mm -hmm. He's like, it'll be a better opportunity for you. So. Just a remarkable human being. Yeah, great, great stuff. Yeah, great stuff. Brad, you were a part of one of the most memorable bunches in Cavalier history, and the new the new uniforms come out. Yeah. Mixtape mm -hmm. uh, uniforms have just come out, each having a piece of the uh, different eras. When you think back to that era, I mean, so many people here 
in Northeast Ohio fell in love with that team. Sure. Right? Do you sure. have a memory or two? And I know you get asked this all the time. Is there a memory or two or a, a game or two or a relationship or two that stands out that just to you is, you know, is what your era was all about? Oh, it's the game seven with the Boston Celtics, yeah. you know, to, to, to go on to the Eastern Conference Finals. I mean, you know, they were at the end of their run, obviously, but, you know, there's Larry Bird, there's Robert Parrish, yeah. there's Kevin McHale in the Boston Garden. We got to get it done. Uh, we never liked the Celtics at this place <laughs> going way back. Shocked. Even not way back. Even way back. <laughs> I see these guys today. They're like, you know, I'm 30 years older than they are. I, I can't stand There's something them. about that green and white. I can't stand them. Uh, but you're looking at that, and they were still thinking that they had enough gas in the tank to win a world championship, mm -hmm. and we beat them, and we beat them emphatically. And it was just a great moment for our organization, for our for our whole that whole genre, because we had the Richfield Coliseum mm -hmm. back in those days rocking, man. Uh, and from where we started and where it ended up was remarkable, because I remember showing up there and, you know, those U-Haul-looking uniforms, which were horrible-looking, <laughs> and, all, and we, you know, guys not really practicing. And so much had to change, and it did in a short period of time. And we were a really, really good basketball team. You know, John mentioned that era. We talked about UNC. You came in after, you know, Michael and mm -hmm. Worthy and won the title, Black Mountain basketball. But do any of those moments come close to 2014 at Watkins Glen <laughs> when 47 <laughs> won the race and you were on the, you were that was fun. broadcasting the race? Yeah, I mean, that was incredible. You know, we've, I've been in the racing business for about 25 years and uh, we had the good fortune to win a cup race in yeah. 2014, which is a big deal. It's hard with to AJ, do. right? AJ with AJ Allmendinger. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we're racing against the behemoths and, I'm a small team. You just don't get those chances. But we outran him, outran those guys and beat them that day. And I about lost my mind because it was just so much fun. <laughs> it's something you don't have control over when you're watching. So that was a great moment. It was a huge moment for me and my race team. But my fondest memories are playing basketball in that Richfield Coliseum out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. No one wanted to come play there. <laughs> yeah. And we just had that place rocking, man. It was fun. But I want you to share with our, with our audience, though, because you were you were in the uh, broadcast. I was broadcast with Rusty they Wallace. They told you to go to, uh, yeah. to the, whatever, the uh, finish yeah. line. Well, you so supposed to lane. be, I mean, you're trying to be objective. Oh, or you did you just, did you just forget it? I was trying. Forget it. I don't want anybody, you know, people lose their minds. So I was trying to be. And Rusty Wallace, Rusty, said, yeah. he's like, man, this is crazy. He's <laughs> <laughs> so then I got excited, and then my, my producer comes on and says, man, you got to go to Victory Lane. So I run down to Victory Lane. I'm knocking people down, and AJ jumps out of the car, and I grab him, and I'm hugging Grabbed him. him. <laughs> yeah. and, I'm, and he's like, Brad, Brad, Brad. I'm like, what? He's like, put me down. I'm a grown man. He was I'm carrying it. I forgot I had him. I was like, he's like, I look, I look ridiculous. I'm, I'm sorry, man. So, so it was fun. That's great. great I, I can tell you, I was watching that race live because I always love Watkins Glen because it's more oh, than it's just awesome. West Turn. Yeah, but it, it, love road I, racing. I, I remember that day very fondly. I told, was a great yeah, day. I told Rafa, we now have somebody to root for. We're always pulling for Brad's drivers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's every, right. every time Naz goes. <laughs> hey, Brad, last message for our fans here at Northeast Side. We're thrilled, obviously, you know this, to have you back in the fray and joining us for selected games uh, on our broadcast. Yeah. But uh, any message for our, uh, our folks here who also are happy to have you back? No, I, I'm so tickled to be back yeah. doing games with you and AC. It's a blast. Uh, just, man, come on out. you got a great young basketball team. We're finally there. We've got the nucleus we need. And if this team continues to evolve the way it can, oh, man, it's not now. It's a couple years from now, but I would jump on the bandwagon right now, just like I am. I'm on the bandwagon. <laughs> yeah. This this, this crew is going to be really good. Hey, it's been fun. Absolutely. It has been fun. Absolutely. And it's going to keep on rolling. Brad, we appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And so if you don't want to go with these guys, come on chat with me. Uh, don't don't be glad to. You've got to work in your Spanish, yeah. work in your Spanish <laughs> show, man. That's okay. Spanish, I'm just saying. <laughs> Un poquito. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Un poquito, yeah. Back with more right after this. <laughs>we are back to close up shop here on the wine and gold show through 15 games cavaliers nine and six dealing with a number of injuries dealing with a tough schedule the schedule does not get any easier the goal i think rafa just continue to weather the storm weather the storm and continue doing what what jb bickerton has been asking of them which is compete every night which and i think have, yeah. if there's one thing that you can take out of these first 15 games john is that the guys has really it's either they have really accepted the challenge or JB has really pushed the right buttons. Because remember a few weeks ago, he said, you know, enough for the talking. 
they start to do the walking, and they responded. And, and I think that is, that is what you got to take out of this, the fact that even in the games that we have lost, nobody takes pleasure of lo- out of losing, but we have been in those games. We have competed the other night against the Celtics, I mean, really shorthanded, and we, we had a chance to win yeah. the game. We talked about it at the top of the telecast. When I say it, there's an authentic feel, an authentic belief, Mm-hmm. I think that's what I mean. You yeah. know what I mean? That they feel that they can come back in each and every game. And we've seen that from this team. Uh, in terms of what lies ahead, a couple of games with the Brooklyn Nets, a couple of games, or one game, I should say, here at home with the uh, Western Conference leading Golden State Warriors, who, by the way, are yet to be completely healthy either, yeah. uh, which is a, a dangerous, <laughs> dangerous thing out West. Uh, and here's a look at that schedule. And, and you see it there, Rafa. This does not get any easier. But it'll never get easier. I was looking at the schedule down the road. You might get one or two games that, again, it's dangerous when you say that they should win. But every game, every, the whole schedule is, 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 is just brutal. I agree. The first 25, though. It's I just mean, been it's, insane. Yeah. Right, right off the hop. starting on the road. But I do believe that the Cavs are going to benefit from that long road trip at the beginning of the season because that brought them I, together. But I also think they're going to benefit because it, I do think it – it's going to get a little bit easier. It's going to get more spread out when they need it to be yeah. spread out, and they're not. And they're going to have more home games. You know, at, at times when you need it in the dog days of the NBA into February and on into March. And speaking of dogs, I got a message from Coach JB Bickerstaff and the players. They said that the only thing that could take us above to the next level is for you and AC and Brad when he's here to do a little barking when, oh. they, when we win, you know. Woo, 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 woo. So that's what we need to get it on video on Bali Sports Ohio, just you and AC doing the dog. Has any barking taken place on the Spanish Oh, yeah, side? plenty. Oh, that's Actually, the other thing, you, you know do, what I did? You do anything you want. He, way, anything goes. he, way he hit a tree and I did a howl. Like, oh. <laughs> why, why did I ask, right? Why did I ask? Yeah, we'll take the barking thing under advisement. Thanks. Yeah. From the- from the guy on the Spanish side who does anything he wants. Anything goes. Anything he wants throughout the entire <laughs> broadcast. For Rafa, I'm John. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the Wine and Gold Show. Adios.